uh, well friends welcome to today's webinar and uh, today dr sanjay mehta will uh, uh, moderate this session over to you dr sanjay hello good evening friends welcome back we, we had a introductory session about uh, what is competency based medical education and we also studied or rather we had gone through the competency based medical curriculum which is being followed there in canada in queens school of medicine university we also studied and compared medical council of india's guideline with regards to competency based medical education so going further from that today we will focus on objectives so today we have got our lead faculty dr purnima from assam johat medical college so she is going to take a session about learning objective and how to extract learning objective from competencies this is the main session and because we are going to start our group work based on how to frame objectives and how to frame a proper objectives so let us welcome dr pranima yeah thank you so much thank you dr um, sanjay uh, mehta and dr sanjay bedi sir once again uh, well uh, to start with like uh, as i know that this is probably the second in line of webinar in this cbme microbiology group and today our objective would be to understand how to derive learning objectives from the competencies so as we start this is one of the pictures which i think you all are familiar with which speaks a lot once we understand this um flow chart we will also know that what we are about to do and why are we actually doing and what are we trying to achieve so medical council of india has revised the undergraduate medical education curriculum as we all know and the goal is to create the indian medical graduate uh, an indian medical graduate who will be able to recognize health for all as a national goal and should be able to fulfill his or her societal obligations therefore if that is the national goal which means that to reach that goal our indian medical graduate should be able to perform certain roles and um, i'm sure you all know about the roles that has been assigned to the indian medical graduate those, those are of being a clinician a, a lifelong learner a professional a leader and a communicator well how do one achieve these roles which means there are certain competencies attached to these roles and once they achieve these competencies we become certain that the role has been or the role assigned to them has been achieved or at least they will be competent enough to function as the indian medical graduate which is our national goal and now how do we achieve these competencies so these competencies can be achieved by breaking down these competencies to smaller objectives so today we are going to discuss about how to derive the objectives which are the main stay if you can see here we can see that objectives is the beginning point actually if we have our objectives very clear we can achieve the competencies and as such we will be sure that the role can be achieved finally we will achieve the goal in nationwide as a whole uh, so this is one of the inverted pyramids which you all know that goals are broad and outcomes or other the objectives which you talk about are very narrow and measurable i have already mentioned that the goal is 
should that under uh, the Indian medical graduate should be able to recognize health for all as a national goal. This is the national goal and Indian medical graduate must be able to function as a clinician, must be able to function as a leader. Those, these are the rules and certain Global competencies are actually assigned to them. Like who will be a clinician who understands and provides preventive, promotive, curative, palliative, and holistic care with compassion appropriately and effectively. Now, if you happen to see, we say IMG is such and such, which means this appears to be very, very broad. So we need to now again simplify it. This is the rule. Uh, similarly, as a clinician would do this, we expect that the Indian medical graduate would be a leader and a member of a healthcare team, a communicator, lifelong learner, and a professional who is committed to excellence, and so on and so forth, which are the rules. Now, if you see this picture, you will see that there are ample number of global competencies. The ones which we mentioned just, which I mentioned just now, about the clinician, the leader, team member, communicator, what they're supposed to do. These are the global competencies. Likewise, there are some subject-based com competencies also, which finally amalgamate along with the global competencies to create the Indian medical graduate. I hope I'm clear you, are, you can understand that there are two things we have to understand. One is the subject-wise or the subject-based uh, competencies. And finally, we have the global competencies which are which translate into creating the indian medical graduate now for example if we talk about microbiology as a subject and the indian medical graduate who is being taught microbiology what do we expect we would expect that the student will be able to demonstrate the ability to choose the appropriate diagnostic test and interpret these tests based on scientific validity, cost effectiveness, and clinical context. So this appears to be more broad, and this is a global competency for our subject. However, if we now go on to simplify, we will see that what exactly do we want? Which diagnostic test are we talking about? So we can pick up some, and uh, you can see that here we have kept it as gram stain, Z stain, and routine stool microscopy, which are the must-know areas or the core competencies which are assigned to the um, microbiology competencies. So perform and identify the different causative agents of infectious diseases by gram stain, Z stain, and stool routine microscopy. So you can see here, this is a sub-competency. So there would be so many sub-competencies together that would lead to a global competency. A global competency of the subject, which again will translate to being a clinician. That is the ultimate role of the Indian, one of the roles of the Indian medical graduate. I hope it is clear till now. So we have something which is very broad, which we say that we want them to know the appropriate diagnostic test. Then we break it down to which are the diagno diagnostic tests we would like them to know and to what extent. So here you can see that the student should be able to perform the zeal instance stain on a sputum positive smear and demonstrate the AFB by microscopy correctly. So can you see the difference? This is what we call the specific learning objective. So my friends, uh, I can understand that who, who, whoever are here as participants, you certainly are aware of what a specific learning objective is. So the task for us would be uh, to derive such kind of specific learning objectives from the competencies or the sub-competencies which are outlined in the competency booklet uh, given to us by the NCI. Uh, Any just question for the you have, please, please type in the chat box or WhatsApp group or raise your right. hands. Yes. So finally, if we come to the definition of goal, we know that it is an idea of the future and which the people envision, uh, plan, and commit to achieve. Role we all know is a position or purpose that someone or something uh, we have in a situation or in the organization, society, etc. So now what we should com concentrate on understanding is the competency. What is competency? 
it is an observable ability of a learner that includes multiple components mind you it is multiple components which consists of knowledge skills values and attitude so this is a whole something we are not talking say, separately or individually about the knowledge or the skill or the values but it is a wholesome a package of all of this together to make a indian medical graduate competent and finally we have the learning objective which we know are brief very clear very specific statements which depict what the learners need to know at the end of a learning session or as a result of the activities or whatever teaching learning is taken taken place uh so here we have a short exercise i would request uh, any of the sanjays to take this up um so for the participants could you please identify which of these are the competencies which of these are uh, the objectives and the goals you can uh, use this um, raise your hand option Sanjay sir can we have just 1 minute for this Yes we can have you can write in the chat box or whatsapp group or raise your hands So the five statements uh, uh, six statements are here, uh, statements are here so identify which of these are goal competency or a objective uh, dr mukesh please unmute yourself yes sir yes please unmute yourself yes please speak doctor uh, sir uh, the number 6 is the objectives where communicate effectively with the patient to the provide patient satisfaction practice holistic medicine is your competencies second five number elicit a history of occupational exposure so this is also an objectives correct positioning of the patients and demonstrate the correct technique this is also an objective slo L learn every aspects of national policies yes sir competencies competency hongi and goal will be the develop uh, uh, i think goal will the practice holistic medicine sir fourth one develop negotiate implement patient management will be uh, will be the competency okay thank you so much let, let us just thank quickly see yeah what the results are uh, so do we have any more hands up yes atul uh, dr atul uh, rukadikar yes dr atul in the chat also there are lot, lot of responses move okay uh, uh four is a goal two and four is a goal three is slo five is slo dr sain leela dr basuda dr rajhans they have all responded and also so can we the, take yes can we take a look at the answers yes all right so here it goes there are two goals over here learn every aspect of national policy so every aspect what does that mean it's very very broad and same practice holistic medicine which again is very broad and when we talk about competency here can you see the first one develop negotiate and implement patient management plans uh, this is a competency because first of all you can see that it is broad and then there are three action verbs in the same um statement here when you see number 6 that communicate effectively with the patients to provide pa patient satisfaction so this is again very very broad it is not mentioning about communicate effectively with the patient in what situation what is the patient satisfaction what else is required so this becomes a competency and further we need to break it down to objectives so here we have only two objectives which states that elicit a history of occupational exposure in patients with a history of asthma and correctly position the patient and demonstrate the correct technique to 
um, palpate the spleen. I hope it is clear. Therefore, you can now very well understand how important objectives are. Objectives are those short statements which will make the students realize. See, these are uh, specific learning objectives. These are not teaching objectives. So usually when we write the objectives, we write it from the end of our as teachers and we state what we are going to teach. But when, when we see it carefully, we will see that these specific learning objectives has to be in a way that the student can grasp that this is what I need to learn at the end of a particular session. And when we talk, if you see this picture, you can see that the objectives probably were not so clear and there was only one smart person who could reach up who tried the best, brought the ladder and climbed up. And the rest are still awaiting, either for the instructions, which were not very clear. And then we do not want our Indian medical graduates to be in such different strata. Therefore, as you all know, that objective should be smart, very specific. One should know what one has to accomplish, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. I will not go into details of this because I understand that as um, health profession educators, and most importantly, because you are here today, you would be already knowing these things. So when we are talking about objectives, one more important thing we have to understand is that learning usually occurs in these domains. These are called the domains of learning so what are the domains of learning the cognitive psychomotor affective and the new domain which uh, finds a good um, um, reflection in our um, competency-based curriculum is of communication and all of these domains the knowledge skill and attitude they have a taxonomy which is associated with this taxonomy is nothing but a kind of classification and these are arranged in a manner that proceed from very simple to more complex. For example, if we take the cognitive domain or the domain of the head, we will see that there are various uh, gradations in this or classification, which says that uh, knowledge which forms the base of everything where we talk about the factual knowledge, the recall memory, etc. And gradually as the students learn to have, first of all, they acquire the knowledge and then they try to comprehend, that is understand. And thereafter, they need to apply. Some of them can also analyze, synthesize, and evaluate finally. Therefore, if we talk of cognitive domain, we can see three levels. If we combine all the, um, the classification here is number one, knowledge. Only when we have the knowledge, we can comprehend something. And only when the understanding is there, one can pro solve the problems associated with that particular um, material or that particular topic. So let us take this example. At the end of the learning session, students should be able to, number one, enumerate the etiology of gas gangrene. So we all have taken uh, these classes of Clostridia and we know that when we ask the student, they would immediately say, yes, Clostridium perfringens, Clostridium novi, histolyticum, secticum, whatever. So that is just recall or rote memory and they memorize, they learn. There's nothing to understand as such. However, when you ask them to explain the pathogenesis of gas gangrene, it will require some amount of comprehension and understanding. That what happens when the Clostridia infects, what happens when it is associated with any anaerobic streptococci. So these are some of the things and get into the details of pathogenesis, like what is redox potential, how it is important, what is EH, pH, et cetera in this. So it goes a step ahead. Finally, when you give them a problem to solve, they will need to identify the etiological cause in a given clinical case. So uh, if you give, a, uh, if you give a, the student um, um, a case of gangrene, so they should be able to identify not the etiological cause, which could not be just only due to Clostridium perfringens, how it appears, what, how, uh, how the, um, the gram stain probably or the smear would appear if there are anaerobic streptococci associated with it, etc., etc. So they go into more details, and these are the higher 
levels of cognitive domain. Similarly, when we come to the psychomotor domain, we have various gradations and the level one is of imitation where the student just pick up things from whoever demonstrates in the classroom. Finally, they are given to practice, which later on leads to out of due to practice, frequent practice, it leads to automatism. And a very um, good example of this is how to drive a car, which is given in almost always um, in all the uh, sessions where objective is ob or learning objective is taught or when we talk about learning domains. So here you can see that the learner shall be able to follow the steps of gram staining on smear. So this is imitation. This is what we do in the practical class. We have our laboratory technician or the demonstrators or any of the teachers who show them the steps of gram staining. And finally, they perform the gram staining under observation of the tutor themselves, that is practice or controlled practice. And finally, a situation would come when they are supposed to or when they are made to do themselves independently the OPD or the word, when now they will not think which are, which are the stains they are picking up, how much time they have to keep, uh, or whether they are keeping the time, they are encircling the slide where the smear has been made, it becomes very, very automatic. This is about the example of psychomotor domain. And then we have the domain of the heart, and it, it is, again, it consists of receiving, responding, valuing, organization, etc. Uh, we will talk about three levels. Number one is receiving. So anything, any, any of these um, activity that happens in and around us, first of all, when our heart starts functioning, we will first receive, we will feel, we'll start feeling, okay? And thereafter, we respond to that. And at that, and a time comes when a, all of these things, you know, that feeling, that responding, it becomes very, very internalized. And when we keep doing that automatically. So here's an example that uh, realize the pain of a patient who has been able, who has been declared HIV positive. So can you see, for us as a student, when we have our students, do we tell them about all this? So once this effective domain part is taught, it would be like, first of all, see what the patient, it's basically about empathy. Realize the pain of a patient who has been declared HIV positive. The student receives or we receive. Finally, how do we respond? Once we receive the pain of the patient, we will try to counsel about the HIV status. And in counseling, we will be talking more about how it is. And there have been, we all know about the counseling. So this is responding. Finally, when this happens one to one, usually what we do is, you know, realizing the pain and counseling, all this will, um, this can be done um, uh, maybe as a role play or something. And finally, when they are quite confident about it, they can start counseling the HIV positive patient in OPDs and wards and which become internalized because now they know how to and not to disclose in open in front of people when they are in OPD or wards, take them separately. So these are the things we have to be very, very specific about when we are um, deriving the learning objectives, and especially in this domain of art. So uh, you must be also knowing by now that there are some words or the action words which are associated with the cognitive domain, the psychomotor domain, and the affective domain, which particularly reflect or which particularly highlight that what is expected of the student to do. And also for us as a teacher, that if we are teaching them, keeping in mind these objectives or the action words, we also assess them in the same manner. So if we are asking them to define something, we will not expect them to identify and detect and differentiate, etc. Okay, so we will keep all the domains intact, the action verbs intact when we are again relating or associating it with the teaching learning methods and we are relating it with the assessment that we will come to a bit later. So we have to be very, very sure what everything, the game lies in this action verb, what action verb we are actually putting here in our objectives. Some of the bad words that should actually be avoided because when we say that the student should be able to know, know how much, learn, uh, learn how much, increase, how much to increase. So really know, think critically, understand. So uh, the way I think critically may not be the same as 
you would think understand approach uh, grasp the significance of so these are whenever you find these kind of um, action words in objectives please understand that these objectives are not very well designed and we must avoid using these action verbs in our um, objectives and uh, finally we know about this the different levels of nose knows how shows shows how miller's pyramid we know that no knows when we think that the student should know it is a knowledge attribute usually we will uh, expect them to enumerate something describe something and finally we have knows how which is a little higher level where the student may be able to analyze and give uh, maybe interpret some things okay and shows uh, is a skill attribute again to identify demonstrate the steps and shows how will go a little further and it requires a little more complex behavior and finally it is performs and uh, in our um, this um, uh, competency based for medical education curriculum for the undergraduates performance uh, is usually there in probably very few this is expected only in the interns during internship of course they will be performing like um, in microbiology they will be uh, performing the zetin stain and this and then the number of times they are going to perform to be certified these are mentioned in the competency booklet which we will talk in a while so uh, please remember this golden triangle once the learning objectives the learning methods and the assessment methods are in place can you see these are bidirectional each of these individual component they affect the other and if all of these are together synced very well synced the learning experience will be a very positive one and finally probably we will be able to reach our intended outcome which is the competency which we would like that indian medical graduate to away or achieve at our level or at the level of phase 2 so coming to this competency booklet i am sure you all must have by now gone through the competency booklet given out by the mci and this is a wonderful document and of course this is a live document and it is subject to a lot of modification gradually uh, however let me just take you through this even if you know please bear with me uh, i'll just tell you about the columns once again for those who probably may not be very sure about it all right so here you have uh, the column number 1 which mentions about the subject and a number is assigned or the competency is assigned so one more thing i would like to highlight here is most of when we talk about competency we talk about the global competencies as such and these global competence uh, competencies are the ones which are wholesome so usually when we see these competencies the subject wise competencies given in the competency booklet these are mostly sub competencies so here you will find that in some these are just objectives plain objectives and in some there are some two action verbs which are actually sub competencies which probably we will need to simplify further into so every learning objective should ideally have one action verb should have one action verb so the second column describes the competencies finally in the third column we have the domain which states that uh, it, it it is a knowledge domain the skills domain the attitude or communication domain and then you have the level whether what do we expect the student to know only know or a little higher than that so accordingly we will have to make our lesson plans right the fifth column states whether it is a core or a non core competency so core are the must knows areas and the non core would be some good to know areas and majority almost 90% we have are the core areas in this competency booklet uh this booklet also suggests us the teaching learning methodologies like which for the particular sorry for a particular competencies which is the domain um to what level are we going to teach whether it is core and in what form can we teach them all right uh, suggested assessment method is also given of course these are only suggested ones you we can definitely um work on it and there are so many things we can add as well there's this eighth column which states that uh, whether certification is required 
which means when we say certification which means they have to perform so there would be some competencies where certification is not required and wherever it is mentioned we will have to work accordingly finally there is a column for vertical integration which states to which um, uh, subject or which um, department we have to vertically integrate with and the uh, column for horizontal integration. So this is a very simple and a very nicely made uh, competency table which will uh, help us a long way while we are designing our objectives now, henceforth, like in the next few weeks. Um, so here is one um, competency, like identify the etiology of meningitis based on given CSF parameters. So henceforth, we will be working on the subcompetencies given in the competency booklet. So let us take this example and here it goes. If we have this competency, like identify the etiology of meningitis based on given CSF parameters, here the domain is, you will require both knowledge and skill domain. And if you have to identify, it has to be the shows how level, okay? So see how we need to break it up. At the end of the session, the phase two students, please uh, carefully look at the components, okay? At the end of the session, the phase two students will be able to enumerate the most common causes of meningitis correctly. So when we have this as a competency, what are the two factors that are coming up is, one is the student has to know about meningitis and secondly about CS, right? So un unless they know the components of CSF analysis, they would not be able to anyway do anything. Or if they don't know the etiological agents, they will not be able to identify meningitis based on the parameters as such. So that is number one. Second is at the end of the session, phase two students will be able to enumerate the components of a CSF analysis correctly. Can you see CSF analysis component and the common causes of meningitis? At the end of the session, number three, end of a session, the phase two students will be able to describe the CSF features for a given etiology of meningitis accurately. So you can see that there is one subcompetency which can be broken down into number of competent uh, objectives and each of these objectives they have got a specific action work assigned to it and the fourth one is at the end of the session again the phase two students will be able to identify the etiology of meningitis correctly from a given set of parameters so i've highlighted the few uh, words let us see what does that mean so you can see here number one is the phase two students so who is going to learn at the end of the session? It is the phase two students who are the audience. So before I begin this, I would also like to tell you that while we are writing objectives, there are various methods by which we can write objectives. Here we are using the ABCD method of writing objectives, okay? So first we need to know who is going to be the audience. Once we know the audience, we have to know what is the behavior that we expect them to change. What is, what is learning? Learning is nothing but the change in the behavior. In behavior means that something which I did not know, but after the lesson I knew. Here, we would like them to enumerate the common causes. We would like them to enumerate the components of CSF, describe the CSF features and identify the etiology. So you have got the B, A, B. Finally, the condition. Under what condition? If you just say that at the end of the phase session, we'll be able to identify the etiology of meningitis correctly from where? Which means, are we providing a set of parameters to them already? Or are we expecting just to go to the lab and have any CSF which they find? Okay, so we will have to be very specific about the condition. Whether we are giving a condition, we may not give the condition. That depends on what our objective is. And finally, the degree. Is it okay if they just um, um, enumerate the common causes of meningitis? One is correctly. You may also ask them to enumerate the most common ca causes of meningitis in neonates. So we may give them a condition like neonates or we may give them a degree like accurately, effectively, correctly, etc. I hope this is clear. So this is the ABCD method of writing objectives. <clears throat> at the end of a 
at the end of this session learn a session the student will be able to discuss the detail of a st steps performing a heart transplant operation is it relevant we will have to see that at the end of the lesson the student will be able to understand sepsis does it make a sentence sepsis means something to me it may mean something else to you sepsis is very very broad so is it measurable when we say understand sepsis yes a particular um, uh, part can be dealt with the, uh, by the student properly and maybe they may not know uh, certain other so whether it is measurable so whenever we are teaching them something whenever we are designing objectives we should also check whether it is measurable or not whether it is relevant or not and not just give anything at the end of the learning session the student will be able to perform thymectomy independently do we expect an indian medical graduate to do this whether it is feasible okay so a smart slo should also consider the relevance of it it should be measurable and also feasible the learner should be able to elicit the superficial and deep reflexes to the satisfaction of the examiner what is the criteria satisfaction of examiner there are some examiners who would probably not just not go to see whether they are eliciting or not and ask questions and leave it okay and so criteria again it becomes very very different at the end of the lesson again the student must trace the course of the cubital vein uh, trace the course of the cubital vein again the relevance the feasibility and it's you can understand how it is so at the end of the microbiology class the learner will be able to stain the provided slide with gram staining and demonstrate the gram negative and gram positive organisms correctly can you can you just make out the difference that how specific this is we are providing the slide which is the condition and we want them to stain the um, uh, grams do the gram staining and identify the gram negative and the gram positive organisms and that too correctly okay so this is very very smart so finally when we talk about uh, we will work, uh, sooner we, we are going to start working on these competencies and deriving objectives so this is one of the tables which we are going to use the abcd table where we are going to write the um, competency or the sub competencies on, on top and then <coughs> um derive uh, the learning objectives as per abcd method uh, so uh, this was all and um, thanks to all of you uh, to listening um, i mean for listening uh, to me and most importantly i acknowledge the help of dr sanjay mehta and dr sanjay bedi sir your uh, and dr sanjay mehta has helped me with few of the slides thank you so much and this is what it is the last slide please go through this should we put down what we think is right or what we think you think is right so <laughs> the student should not be confused and when we are taking our learning objectives to the classroom it should be learning objectives and not the teaching objectives it should be very very clear to the students therefore as we go ahead and we start working on our writing objectives we should keep this in mind so thank you so much everyone over to dr sanjay mehta and dr sanjay bedi sir hello yes uh thank you madam it was a very nice and very clear and simple presentation and i think uh, it is very clear that what we are supposed to do right the exercise which we are going to follow now is a breakdown our competency into teaching learning objectives right rather specific learning objectives sorry and that is what the exercise and from monday we'll start working on that i think you all are very clear about what is abcd of specific learning objectives you all have been divided into various groups right and we'll start working and we'll start deriving various objectives from that particular system under the leadership of our group leader uh and from monday daily that will go we are going to assess that and we'll try to correct it also first within the group and then from other groups also uh, 
uh, now we can have a question and answer session. If any of you are having any questions, please raise your hand. So we all will be over here and we can discuss out. Dr. Bedi, sir. To my question. Questions, anyone? Please write in the yes, Dr. Prerna Bhatia Bhalla. Bhalla. Prerna Bhalla. Yeah. Yes. Well, I've been uh, assigned the system on genital urinary system and STDs. I was thinking whether we should make the specific learning objectives more from the disease angle or from the organism angle. I would have to cover about six, seven organisms and five or six diseases and one urinary tract infection. So should we go by the disease, starting with the disease, or should we go with the organism? All right, should I take this question? Yes, madam. Yes. All right. So when we are talking about the gen genitourinary infections or mostly the sexual um, transmitted infections, etc., these are more syndromic, and uh, we have to see what our final uh, what are the competency uh, we look forward to. Because the student, obviously the undergraduate um, or the Indian medical graduate, will have to know about the syndromes. So uh, the disease angle will be there. And they have to, and as microbiologists, again, they will have to learn, know how to associate. So, so I understand that both will come hand in hand. They yes, have, we that, have to uh, devise, yes, it has to go, you know, uh, hand in hand. That is Disease what I as would, well as the organism. I thought so too. Yes. So I just right. wanted to clarify. Right now. Yes, right now. Madam, uh, I would like to say something. See, basically, we have been teaching this microbiology since ages in the same manner right organism starting with morphology and ending with the laboratory diagnosis that's, and that's right. why, yeah, that is why we said that the our this is the only subject out of anatomy to medicine which has been changed upside down right mm -hmm. so we'll have to look, look from the other end definitely it will mm. be directly going to the clinical first syndromic and according to that only we'll have to work Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Prakash. Hello. Uh, sir, please. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, ma'am, uh, good evening, ma'am. It was a nice presentation. I'm Dr. Prakash. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Ma'am, I, I have a question, ma'am. Yes. Can you sir. give an example? Can you give an example for a knowledge-based domain? Which is a smart SLO. Mm -hmm. Like for example, we have a cardiovascular system. So can you take any knowledge domain and then give a smart SLO for that example? Okay, for knowledge domain in the cardio. So you can uh, ask them about you know the um, about endocarditis. Okay. Maybe uh, just um, yeah enumerate the causes um, of um, bacterial endocarditis maybe. Uh, we don't so have a very basic problem, right? No, Hello. no. See, every uh, every objective may not have all the components of ABCD. However, you can just if I have to uh, write about uh, this, um, enumerate the causes of sub -bacteri bacterial endocarditis. I would say that at the end of the learning session, the phase two students audience, okay, should yeah, be ma able to enumerate. Yeah. Should be able to enumerate at least three causes of bacterial endocarditis okay so i'm giving a condition and if i say co correctly it becomes the degree okay okay yes Thank yes you. very uh -huh. right so this is a like yes uh, yes i would like to add something to that see very very rightly said by madam that when we talk about cognitive and lower level right recall usually yes, don't, yeah, that will not fulfill all ABCD criteria, but ABCD is very important when you are talking about uh, psychomotor and affective domain or communication. At that time, it has become an uh, internal part of that. Otherwise, putting everything ABCD everywhere, it will become a trivial exercise. 
Yes, sir. That's why it, uh, this is a question regarding with the respect to the junior faculties because most of them think they should have ABCD in all the things. That's the reason why I just asked this, sir. They should be able to, as for example, they should be able to describe, as Madam said, common causes of rheumatic fever prevalent in India, like that. Yes, sir. Good. Thank you, sir. Any, Any more? Hello. Yes, Dr. Raghavendra Rao. Uh, he has written. Sir, you are not audible, sir. Uh, he has written in the chat box that uh, example of teaching learning methods and its relevance with ABCD, especially in case of DOAP. Right. Right. So we'll, have, we'll, we'll have a separate session on teaching learning method. It is coming up. Right. And here, meanwhile, um, I gave you an example over here about the ZN staining and gram staining. So this can be a perfect example of DOAP. Can you see here? Follow the steps of gram staining on a smear and then perform the gram, st gram staining under observation. So this is an example where DOAP can be done. Is it clear? Yes. OK, thank you. Uh Dr. Rajhans Nagarkar, please unmute yourself. Dr. Rajhans. Uh, he has also written in the... Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Am I audible now? Yes. yes sir. Hello, sir. Uh, sorry, sorry for late reply. Hello, sir. Hello. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Sir, as Madam has given a very nice presentation, and it was actually a summary of whatever we know about the competencies and how the specific learning objective should be derived from these things. The thing is, Madam has given one gram stain example at the end of uh, her slides. So, in that, can we add degree also? That is, uh, doing the gram staining uh, uh, in better way. That is, three out of uh, three times out of five so then the slo will be uh, more better or uh, no need to add every time add just now it is discussed a b c d everything at every time um, uh, if you are mentioning about the degree it uh, are, are we trying to assess that out of five times they have done it three times that would uh, yeah. lead to you know performance certification okay like for Zenstein, they have to do 10 times perfectly only then they will be certified but when we are deriving yes. objective we may not just give the criterion for uh, certification. So three out of five will not mean much in an SLO. Okay, ma'am. Hmm? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. It will become a, it will become assessment, right? Yes, it okay. will become assessment. Uh, thank you. Any more hands? Yes, Doctor. Uh, no, Atul. I think he has already asked. Doctor Atul, are you there? Doctor Atul and Mukesh Kumar. Yes, sir. Dr. Mukesh here, sir. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, ma'am, uh, I wanted to add on or maybe a little bit, I want to be more clear. As a, a second phase student, in case of mm -hmm. degree, uh, because mm -hmm. a lot of organisms are there, they cannot mark many as a microbiologist. So, right. at degree level, degree should be, I think, uh, four commonest bacterial, 
four communist or one two communist fungal or three viral type this can be the better degree uh, we can add on that they should know the as i was hearing that endocarditis so they should able to know the communist bacterial the communist. in the cause so this will be the right, more right. clear right absolutely you are very correct sir we want them to know only the basic yes ma'am because they don't want to become microbiologists once they go out but they should know Absolutely. okay these are this bacteria in our state or in our india and that should be treated so and so antibiotic like that we'll discuss that yes, later yes. yes yes certainly yes. certainly we want them to know what is locally relevant then what is regionally and then nationally and then internationally relevant yes yes ma'am because then it will be very easy to uh, to become first contact with the patient because most of them act locally ma'am because many yes, organisms yes, we cannot found absolutely absolutely you, i completely I agree you. yes sir thank you so much so anybody else i am lowering all the current hands any will still wants to ask raise your hands again uh no more hands so and no more questions in the chat box and also in the whatsapp group also uh we don't have any yes So I think we can end here, Doctor Purnima. Right, sir. We may. Yes, yes sir. Thank you once Thank again, you, both the Sanjay. Yes. Oh, welcome. Yes, yeah, Sanjay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Meet you again very soon. Yes. Right. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.